Hey guys, uh, my first attempt at making a video like this, uh, I'm going to show you uh, how we're putting together a chicken tractor. I'm going to flip the camera around here and I'll show you a picture of what we've already made and we're going to duplicate that. I'm going to have two chicken tractors with about uh, 47, 48 birds in them uh, to raise for meat. So I'm going to show you a picture of what we got to start with. We built this here a week ago. I'm going to show you what we've got now. What I built here last week, it's a 6x6. Six six. Uh, it's got uh, about 47 birds in it right now. Uh, as you can tell, they're all kind of snug as a bug in a rug. It did temperature kind of dropped down pretty low, so we had to seal all the cracks and put plastic all over everything, kind of get it all sealed up so they could stand the colder temperatures. But uh, got two heat lamps in there. And I uh, got a little feeder. Got one trying to escape. Okay. Uh, got a feeder and two little hanging waters, so uh, yeah, gonna give you an idea of what it looks like inside. And like I said, it's six by six. And I'll show you how we put them together. Starting out with a six foot by six foot base. Uh, outside runs are six foot long, and uh, the inside runs right here, 69 inches to compensate for the inch and a half on both sides mounted on the inside so I'm gonna stop it and uh, get set up and we're gonna slice up the uprights uh, we're making the uprights two feet tall and now uh, we'll, we'll uh, go from there um, I also want to mention that the bottom is all treated wood the uprights and then the top rung on the thing is uh, untreated Now I've got the the uh, upright saw cut. They're 24 inches long, uh, two by four, and I'm going to be installing seven of them. One on each corner, one on the left and right sides, and one at the very back. And they're all centered. Uh, the the sides and the very back are centered, and then the ones at the corners are mounted in the corner. Just kind of give you an idea of what I did here. You can see I marked the center line on the uprights right in the center of the two before and marked the, the center at three foot on the sides and the very back. So we're going to go ahead and install those. Now you can see we've got the three, the two side pieces and the one back piece mounted in the centers. And I'll show you how we mount the corners. Take these, you want to make sure and to give yourself plenty of, of uh, support as much as you can. Uh, you see how this butt joint mounts up. If you mount this in here like this, it gives the corner just a little bit more support. Uh, you got come in from the sides with the screws here and then from the sides here and it gives everything a, a good support. Actually, I'm sorry, I like this. This is the way you want to mount them. That way you've got two screws here. It's two screws there. Okay, we'll go ahead and show you how I do these. Breezy today. That's 
how we do that. We're gonna do that to all four corners. You can see we got the corners and the side uprights all put in. I'll cut it 24 inches. And we're gonna get ready to cut the uh, top rung. The rail runs along the top. All right, as you can see, we got the top rails on. Uprights are all in place. Uh, I'll show you right here. Left an inch and a half gap. That's the width of two four. It's gonna come across and help support the door opening and everything. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay a two by four all down along the length of that, laying flat. And that will be the support for the PVC rafters. All right, now you can see the top plates that we're gonna be drilling down in for the the um, PVC rafters. Got the sides built and everything. You see, we kind of left the gap here. We're gonna come in with the two by four for the door supports on both sides. Now that we've got our top plates on, uh, these are going to be the supports for our PVC rafters. Um, we get a drill hole. Oh, I'm going to drill. I'm using a one-inch bit. I've got a piece of black tape that is marking the depth that I want to drill. It's an inch and a quarter deep. And I've got markings all along where I'm going to be drilling straight down in for the PVC rafters. Both rails. Now we're going to do that for each one of those uh, those holes along the length of both top plates. See, now we've got all of our holes uh, drilled for our PVC rafters. Um, you got eight total they're separated by two foot lengths um, this is the PVC I've got it's half inch schedule 40 comes in 10 foot pieces um, what I've done is I've taken and <coughs> cut them off at the eight foot length that's what we're going to be using for the rafters I've also marked them in the center at four foot and that's where we're going to be heating it up with a heat gun and bending a 90 degree angle on it and then we'll move out to the ends and we'll bend down the ends about an inch and a quarter of the ends on each end of them to go down into the holes for the rafters. Okay. This is the center of the, at the four foot mark on the PVC, I'm gonna heat it up with a heat gun. I'll show you how we make our bend for the top. Just about the time it starts to cool, lift it up and you know, make the bend and then we'll stand it up so it'll hold its shape. Socket over the end to just kind of protect the end from just this, this torque and then we're going to the beam. It also gives them a good reference point for bending. The PVC goes in about an inch and a quarter, is that how deep our hole is? So. Slow with this one, we get it a little hot. This PVC will crack if you try to bend it when it's too cold. Okay, I'm 
and it's got the gear there. Yeah, I see. And you do that to the ends of all four pieces that you bent in the middle. Mm -hmm. See, it'll fit right down inside the hole. And while we've got that in there, it's kind of holding our position. We'll slip it up. We'll start warming this one up. This is a ridge beam that uh, a board that we're going to use for ridge beam. It's a two by three uh, board. Instead of a two by four, just wanted something a little bit lighter, but yet rigid enough to give us enough support here on the on the top. I've marked on it uh, the same increments as I did on the top plate that the PVC drops into the holes and everything. So this will give us some uh, support for the the PVC. The hole keep them in. Uh, Position up here at the top. Also, it'll help give you some support to hang anything like feeders or whatever inside. Uh, I've got uh, holes drilled in the top of the peak where I had it marked at the four foot mark, and we're going to run a screw and a fender washer down into the board. Now here you can see a, a ridge beam installed in her, the peak of all of the rafters. Then we're going to install a, a brace from here down to this point here. And that's going to support the ridge at the back. It's also going to help support the axial movement of that ridge beam. This is uh, I'm going to install it right here, matching up the outer edge back here, centering it, and matching up the outer edge back here on the back side. And we'll run some screws in, kind of toenail some screws in there to get that into place. And that's with that back support post in there. And you can see it's already stiffened it up quite a bit. Now we're going to go around. Then we're going to start working on framing in the door. All the support and everything for the front of the little tractor here. All right. Now for the door frame, we've got... Uh, two pieces cut at 34 and 3 quarter uh, that's for the sides of the door frame and the top piece 31 and 3 quarter that allows us uh, the framing and uh, I'll show you how to get all these put together I've used uh, uh, angle braces here on both top sides and then on the back side it's going to be on the inside there's going to be a a triangle piece, a gusset, that we're going to screw on to the back side. That'll just support it on from both sides. So make sure and use your uh, square, square everything up. You want the opening as square as possible. Now I've cut these gussets a little oversized, so we have some underhang here. I guess it gives us support at the corner, but this uh, this piece here is going to be on the inside. And this gives us a solid surface at the top here and over here for the door to close against. 
and we'll also come across with some brace pieces right around in here it's going to also support it on the inside it's going to stick in past the edge just a little bit to kind of give the door some more solid support to stop against so we're going to get these gussets screwed on and then we're going to set it up against the front to kind of give you an idea of what it's going to look like okay i've got uh starting on the door supports we've got one piece put in there in that little gap that i talked to I talked about earlier in videos and one on that side one on this side they're 18 and three quarter we've got two pieces that are 19 and a quarter they'll go on the inside i'll provide the something for the door to tie into also give something for, or the door frame to tie into and also give something solid for the door to close solid against all right got the inside supports installed see they stick out a little beyond about a half inch beyond the, the three and a half inch width of a two before set the door in you'll see what i'm talking about here there we go and we'll have to bump that up to get them on the mark but you see what i'm saying this little lip right here gives the door something solid to close against about midway and this gusset at the top is it something to close against solid at the top and there we go there's our finished door frame racing in the middle got some screws tool nailed in on both sides at the bottom to support that at the bottom the top is pretty solid so you won't have to worry about that next we'll come in here and mark the center of the top of the door frame and we'll come up and we'll put an upright brace up here at the top and i'll brace the, the peak for us on the wind beam this brace here like this we're going to take and we're going to cut out a little bit we're going to cut out a notch inch and a half deep and two inches two inches down so it'll kind of offset sit right in on top of this board With our brace installed at the top of the door. So everything is nice and solid. Okay, um, working on this door, um, we've got everything framed up here. Everything's good and solid. We've got these side supports here and here. I guess it supports up here for the door to close against. I added this little lip at the bottom. There's two before on the inside, the way I did the other chicken tractor that gives it a solid surface for the door to close against there built the door frame itself it is actually a quarter of an inch uh, all the way around just smaller in dimension basically is what it did so that gives it enough clearance to open and close uh, enough, uh, clearance for the hinges and everything acts like it's gonna lay nice and flat and be good and solid so um, next thing we need to do is start stretching some wire that's, that's kind of what it looks like with the door on it the wire will be on the inside of the door it will be strong on the outside of the rest of the chicken tractor so We'll get the wire out and start unrolling and start clipping getting ready to do that we'll do the ends first the front and the back and then uh, we'll do the the sides and up over the top and hit the other side with one one long stretch um here we are uh, getting some chicken wire put on um, as you can see i'm straining it all the way across the front so i can get a good stretch on it and i'll cut the the chicken wire after I get it stretched and tacked on um, I don't know if you can see it or not this chicken wire here about nine years ago my wife and I were down 
um, southeast of where we live. Um, there's an Amish community down there, a large Amish community, and there was a big uh, hardware store down there at that time. And uh, <clears throat> they gave us a real good deal on this chicken wire. And what's so special about it, it's a six foot tall chicken wire, 150 foot roll of it, and uh, it's rubber coated. So it lasts quite a bit longer. Um, I used it on our big chicken coop for our laying hens and that, and the, the run for the hens. But uh, yeah, this is pretty good stuff. Um, I haven't factored this into the cost of uh, each individual chicken tractor, but yeah, I, I like using this because it is so, so forgiving as far as, uh, you know, it lasts forever. And it's easy, just as easy to work with as regular chicken wire. And hopefully this rubber coating and that, that chicken coop and for the laying hens and that, the run um, we built, that was uh, about nine years ago. We haven't had any rust through or anything, so that's pretty good stuff. So just to kind of give you an idea of how this is looking so far. Once I get all this tacked on with the staple gun, I'll come back over that with lads and, and tack into place with a brad nail, but um, we'll cut it to fit and everything. Well, as, as you can tell, we got the all the chicken wire on. Uh, we use zip ties up along the the PVC and down the sides. Got the, everything tied together. So we covered the front, covered the back, and then we strung up this side, up over the top, back down. And along the bottom here, got everything trimmed up. I just took and uh, two by material, two by sixes, two by eights, and sliced them up three eighths of an inch thick, and uh, tacked them up with my brad nailer up for the trim. It covers the staples that we used to attach the chicken wire. And it kind of trimmed it up pretty nice. I did get the hardware on the door and got the door mounted. Uh, so we've got a pretty good little pretty good little swing there. Uh, next, I want to uh, stretch the tarp up over the top. And because this weather is supposed to stay cold for the next several days, Overnight, we're going to put uh, some plastic up. Well, got the tarp installed. Uh, it says it's a six bait. It's a little bit smaller. Of course, it's what do you expect for an economy tarp? Only gave six dollars for the thing, but uh, this is how we put it on. We've got uh, fender washers and uh, three inch screws. Run it down in, pull it tight. Got one up the peak on both ends, and one in each uh, the barrel at each each uh, point. So that's with the tarp on it. Man. I did want to show you another thing uh, that I installed on both of them. Um, got a length of rope. It's probably about oh probably six and a half foot in length. I uh, put clips on it and I run eye screws in. <clears throat> and this is on the front of it. And this just kind of helps aid in lifting the front end up while you're moving it. Pick it up and gets it on the back tires and then you can move it. Um, you could come off the sides with some handles for two, per, two people to pick it up and move it. As long as you extend it out a couple feet, uh, it would give you some, a handle to grab onto and be able to move it also. All right, I'll show you where we're at now in this build. Put this uh, cross piece in here uh, six foot in length, bevel at 45 degrees on each end. 
Um, this is towards the back of the, uh, the chicken tractor and I put eye screws in here and over here. And that's what we're gonna, we hang the waters from. And the feeder just made out of PVC sewer and drain pipe long eye bolts in it to keep the chickens chicks from flipping it over uh, and it's suspended from my bolts from the ridge beam along the top I do want to show you on this uh, to make them portable a little more portable you can put skids on or whatever but uh, we had a little battery powered car that our little one hunter had used for a while and it was given to us and of course it quit working so i used those big tire or big wheels off of it and mounted them on here extended them back just a little bit from the back by a board and uh, whenever you pick up the front it it raises the rear of the chicken tractor just enough so you can move it around and make it a little bit more mobile but that's pretty much the build uh, six by six, and uh, it probably weighs, uh, just picking it up from the front, it weighs probably about 45 pounds, uh, picking it up onto the, the rear wheels, so it's a little bit on the heavy side, but it's built to last, we're going to use this for years to come, so anyway, that's pretty much the build. Hope you all uh, enjoy it.